All right, we're going to tie a pattern today called the Darth Invader. Uh, this is a real productive articulated streamer. Um, started out as a as a solid black streamer and has evolved into a, a couple different colors now that have been real productive. We're going to do the the tan and gold version today. I'm going to start off with some partridge of redditch uh, universal predator hooks. This is a size one. I'm going to go ahead and mount that into our regal vise. Take some uh, dark brown thread. This is 210 denier. And we're just going to lay down a base of thread. The tail of this is going to be a uh, marabou. Find my marabou here real quick. This is going to be Spirit River marabou. I'm going to take a couple plumes and give us a nice bushy tail on this. I'm going to about a shank length long. And we're going to tie that in all the way up the shank. I'm going to leave ourselves about an eye length or two in the back. This is going to help keep our underbody nice and uniform for when we wrap the other materials around this. The body material on this fly is going to be a combination of UV polar chenille. This is the uh, gold UV. Tan and gold is a great combination, uh, especially out here in Colorado and Wyoming. We're going to tie that in first, and we're going to tie it with the material side towards the hook. That way, when we wrap the material, it's going to come over the top. And we're going to wrap up correctly. The second material we're going to put in is Spirit River UV. Uh, this is a dark brown, a medium brown, excuse me. This is UV2 Strung Schloppen. Take a piece there. We're going to take this and kind of just preen back some of the fibers. I'm going to tie that in with the concave side facing the shank of the hook. What we're going to do is take that and we're going to put the polar chenille inside the shape of the schloppen and we're going to wrap that at the same time. That gives us a good amount of schloppen to flash evenly distributed throughout the back hook of this. There's a nice variegated look in there as well. I take that up and leave a little bit of space. Um, ideally, I like to have some of that marabou, the fluff of that schloppen feather at the front of this. But depending on the length of your schloppen, uh, you may get that and you may not. We'll go ahead and tie that off. Clip that off there. I'm just going to kind of clean up the front side here. Make sure all that's locked down. You can take your Velcro brush. Kind of make sure that there's no trapped fibers in there. Then we're going to take a another plume of marabou. Same color as we did the tail with. We're going to prep this by, oh, I got two of them here. Have a one that's got a little bit longer fibers on it. I want that real wispy tips to it. We're going to strip off the fluffy part of this feather down at the bottom. We're going to kind of wet our fingers, make the tip of this.
better, and that's where we're going to tie in. Take this feather, kind of stroke everything back, and you can take the blades of your scissors and kind of crease those backwards. We're only looking for just a couple wraps, depending on the density of your feather. So this one's a little bit lighter. So we did you know, three or four wraps is good. And trim out that stem. As you see, that gives us a nice veil over the top of that darker color underneath, gives some depth to the fly. So we've got about a an eye's length behind, and we're going to tie in our, our first set of rubber legs here. These are clear and gold barred silly legs. Fold those over the top of the thread, tie them in on one side, and then fold them over and tie them on the other side. Then we'll go ahead and just make a little bit of a thread head, just for some durability sake, and whip finish. Go ahead and take some whatever head cement you like to use. This is just clear cure goo hydro. Just kind of seal those thread wraps. And then we'll hit that with the light. Okay, so that's our back hook. We'll set that aside for now. And grab another one of those universal predator hooks from Partridge of Redditch. And you can either do these the same size, um, or you can do it one size larger on the front, depending on what kind of look you're look going for on your streamer. Take that same thread, and we're going to lay down a base here, again. We're going to take our thread up to about the halfway point. I'm tying our junction wire here. This is Senyo's intruder wire. I'm going to take that Senyo's intruder wire. I'm going to put it on about the halfway point. We're going to take it back to about even with the backside bend of the hook, or the barb, excuse me, backside of that barb. And we're going to go in for a couple of glass beads. These are silver lined glass beads. And we're going to go with a brown here. It doesn't matter really what color you want to go with here. It's just something to make that junction point. So we'll take our our back hook that we did before. We're going to go up through the bottom of the eye and through those beads. I'm going to pull that to where we've got a little bit of a loop in the back. We don't want them butt right up against those beads. That'll hinder our movement a little bit. We're going to tie that in. Go up, and then we're going to fold that back around. That's going to add some extra durability. Lash that down. Make sure you got some good tight wraps over the top of that. And go back here to where we tied in that first junction point. Okay, so our next step in this, we've got our thread hanging at the back side of our, of our streamer, just behind the barb of the hook. And we're going to take some uh, UV tan ice dub. I'm going to create a fairly dense noodle, and we're going to build a good little ball right back here in front of those beads. Add a little bit more here. Okay. 
then bring your thread right down in front of that ball. This is going to add in the cropping of our front half here. What we're going to do is we're going to grab another piece of that dark brown, brown schloppen. And I'm going to go about, about halfway down here on the feather. I'm going to tie that in there. And take your tip off. Okay, we're going to take our scissor blades and kind of crease those fibers, get them all heading backwards. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this schloppen right here in front of the ball. What we're doing is we're adding a series of materials over the top of each other, each one getting slightly more supple. And what this is going to do is going to um, add some profile to the bug, to the streamer, in the back half of this. And help cover up that junction point, help it uh, look a little bit more uniform as an entire streamer, but still have the motion of that articulated um, streamer. Okay, so we've got our schloppen. It's all nice and, and cupped around that ball. We're going to go back to our Spirit River Marabou here. And we're going to take, this is that tan color. I'm going to take some of the fluff off the front here. I'm going to take one tan and one of a dark to medium brown. And you want them to be similar sizes and the same length. So we're just going to match that up here. I know that I need to take about that much off. We'll match those two those two feathers up, and we'll stroke back the tips of each one of them. Wet that tip so we have a little bit of a better defined tie-in point. We're going to tie those in right at the right up in front of that schloppen. And what we'll go ahead and do at this point is kind of just leave that sit there for a second and we'll tie in our eyes for the streamer. And we're going to use a yellow painted lead eye. This is a size large. We'll take our thread up to the front here. We're going to start to X wrap over the top of those eyes. Now, if you notice, I've left um, about a hook eye length behind this. We want just enough room that we can finish the fly in the front here, and you're going to see why that's important to leave that hook eye here in a second. Do some X wraps around, around the base. those nice and centered. And what we'll go ahead and do is hit that with some cement. Make sure those thread wraps don't roll on you. I like to use the UV stuff. It hardens real good. So now there's not, those aren't going to move on you. We'll keep our thread kind of right there behind. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap these two feathers simultaneously. We'll kind of get those facing the right direction here. Just 
Just kind of comb those out a little bit as we go along. And I want those stems to come about to the three-quarter point. Tie off those stems. I like to leave just a little bit of stem there and then we'll bury it with the thread. Make sure that those are nice and buried. So as you see, we got a nice uh, variegation of colors, nice model effect that's going to match the back half of that. Also have a lot of movement in that back half. It's just going to flutter in the current. Okay, we'll go ahead and add our second set of rubber legs, same ones that we did before. These are gold clear silly legs. Half those around the thread. That on one side. Fold that over to the other side. And make sure that those are covered up with thread. I'm going to bridge this gap just a little bit here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to make a dubbing loop. We'll spin around our thread to close our loop. And the head of this fly is going to be made from pseudo hair. We'll go ahead and take our dubbing twister. We'll lock that in. Take our pseudo hair. This is the uh, a tan. And brush that out a little bit. It's easy to do it on your leg. Now what we're looking for is about a, a two to three inch section of pseudo hair. This is about two inches. We'll cut that down as close to the hide as we can without getting the actual hide. So we got what looks like that. All right. Go ahead and open our dubbing loop, and we're going to slide that material in there. And what we're aiming for is a nice tapered loop. So we want the butt ends at the top to be longer, and then slowly start to taper down, making sure that there's no clumps. And that all of that is evenly distributed. I'm going to make sure that your rubber legs are in your material clip at this point so they don't get wrapped up in our dubbing loop when we go to spin it. So you can kind of see that we've got this nice dubbing loop here. And like I said, we're going to taper it down. Okay, we'll go ahead and pinch at the bottom here so nothing moves. Spin that dubbing loop tool up to your fingers, then we'll let it go. And do that one more time. Okay, so now we got a, a kind of a clumped mess of, of pseudo hair. Go ahead and take um, a dog brush. We're going to comb this out. We're just untangling all of those fibers. And the idea is to be able to see your thread through this. Go ahead and wet our fingers. Kind of pull this back so that's all going this right direction. And then we'll go ahead and start wrapping forward here.
When we've got about an inch left, we'll go ahead and X wrap through the eyes. And we'll go ahead and build a little mohawk and then come back through, come up, build a little mohawk, and then hopefully at this point you've got a bare thread. You'll come through that last mohawk, we'll tie that bare thread off, and clip off that dubbing loop. And I'll go ahead and finish the fly before I finish this head. I'll put a little bit of a thread head here just to lock down that dubbing loop, make sure it doesn't come out, and then whip finish. I'll go ahead and clip off that thread. And then we can kind of go to town untangling all of this that we've just put down. Just take our dog brush, really work on that, comb it backwards first, comb it forwards next, making sure that we get all of that untangled. It'll give us a nice streamlined head. And then we're gonna comb it back one more time. And because this is a synthetic material, um, it's going to burn really cleanly. So if we've got these nice, or these uh, little scragglies here on the front, you can just take your lighter and make a quick pass through, and that'll give you a nice clean head. Now you can leave it like that. I like to go ahead and take a dark brown Prismacolor marker. And I'll go ahead and kind of just put some bar marks. Up the fly. Go ahead and just make those go down about halfway into the head. Helps to kind of model up that head a little bit, like helps the transition to go through. And then the last thing to do is go ahead and brush that through and that'll model that up real nice. So that's the Darth Invader in a tan and gold combination. Real highly productive color and a real highly productive articulated streamer. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can find us at RockyMountainFlyDesign.com or email us at RockyMountainFlyDesign at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching.